Okay, I want to thank everyone for coming today. We appreciate it. We know it's a busy time of year with uh, not only the work that, that you have to get done, but the holiday season and all the things that that brings along with it, the shopping, the parties, the just general busyness. So we appreciate you taking time out of your day to spend with uh, with us here at HIMSS. I'm Andy Leach. I'm one of the sales managers at HIMSS Inc. This is a walk by webinar, and this is Tuesday, December 9, 2014. So today we're going to talk about tips and tricks using assistive technology for safer and easier independent travel. The first thing I want to do is just give a quick overview of things that we're going to talk about today, kind of at a broad base. We're going to talk about general tips for travelers with disabilities. Uh, we're going to talk about tips specifically for those individuals with visual impairments. We're going to talk about any uses of HIMS low vision products uh, on the go. We are also going to talk about GPS tricks for tablets, real sense U2 note takers, and other note takers. And then uh, we're going to talk about ways to use our new Blaze EZ. Uh, it's a nice utility product. And uh, we're going to talk about it, how it can help with work and enjoyment. So at a broad level, that's kind of how the discussion is going to operate today. Now, the most effective AT tool to ensure safe travel no matter who you are, is strong O&M skills. Uh, there's a lot of great devices out there, but there's no substitute for having at least a feel for you where you are, understanding the layout. Uh, one of my first O&M specialists when I was a little boy taught me about the importance of building a map inside of my head, and that's something that's always stuck with me, and uh, that's always been a useful tool for me. Uh, but you know, besides that, it's also going to come in the form of a cane or a guide dog, whatever your preferred method is. There are also travel agencies and other resources out there that specialize in accessible travel. Some examples of those would be www.disabledtravelers.com, www.flyingcompanions.com, uh, www.flyingwheelstravel.com. Those are all places out there that are good resources, and they will also be able to provide more tips. Uh, www.ricksteve.com is also an area where you can go to get trip planning information, and you can get some things just to give you some good ideas. Www disabledtravelersguide.com. Uh, this is a place for research um, and preparing as much as possible before you go. If you can kind of have an idea of what you're doing before you go, it makes it a lot easier. Another thing to keep in mind is uh, don't be afraid to ask for help. Uh, assistive technology can include knowing when you need help. That's as valuable as any tool that's out there. For the most part, people are willing to help. You have to get used to one of the most difficult things of this is people aren't often very good at giving directions to you if you're blind or visually impaired. They might tell you something, you know, 50 feet away and it turns out to be 100. Or uh, I've had instances before where I got sent way down the airport concourse where they said, oh, it's that. Uh, Gosh, you're probably 100 yards from that, and it turns out to be 100 feet. So uh, these are things to be used as guides, not absolutes. And uh, but most people are pretty good about it, and they do their best. And it's a good idea to take their assistance when it's necessary. That's kind of uh, some things you can do to make your life easier. Download routes and bus schedules and purchase tickets online where possible. These are much more accessible means and, than the printed material, 
and uh, you get you also don't have to deal with getting it at the menu. It's something you've already done, you already have, and again, that's another planning aid and one less thing to worry about. Another trick, and this one is really cool. If you haven't done it, you should consider it. Invest in audible luggage trackers. Uh, that will beep when you're within range, and I think it's about 30 feet. Sharper Image makes a very good one that we like real well. You can learn more about that at http backslash www.sharperimage.com uh, backslash luggage locator. And uh, this is pretty nice. You know, I have always painted a white stripe around the bottom of my suitcase for the reason to be able to help people when I needed help to find it. I always wanted an easy way to identify it. Like I could say, was black, but there's a white stripe around the bottom. But the luggage indicator is a great way if you have to go to a carousel to know it's coming, or if you're on a lot of the regional jets where they make you put your luggage underneath, and then as they unload them, that audible beep will go off, so you'll know that your luggage came up. So that's a pretty handy tool. And if you haven't had checked it out, you should. Yahoo, Yahoo reviewed several of these products uh, that could work well too. And you can check that out at uh, yahoo.com backslash technology backslash development of a new kind of Bluetooth radio. Oh gosh, it's way too long about the URL for me to keep straight. We'll have to send that to you if you need it. You can also purchase and bring along a tactile map. Something I prefer to do ahead of time, but it never hurts to have something like that handy. A great source for this here in the U.S., they have U.S. and European maps, is the Princeton Braille List dot org. It's another resource for you to check out. Another thing that comes in handy is keeping a file on your note taker or your phone or your tablet, whatever your preferred uh, piece of equipment is to have handy. And uh, you can keep all your travel arrangements on it, your addresses, your reservations. Uh, if you have transportation lined up, you can put those numbers in. And it doesn't hurt if you want to keep a backup, you can email it to yourself. So it's kind of a safekeeping, a safe thing to ensure that you have everything at your fingertips. And uh, that'll come in handy, believe me. There's times back in the old days I'd have to get out my laptop or current day a note taker and pull that stuff up, and it uh, really gives you a peace of mind. Now we're going to switch gears here a little bit. I've kind of overviewed several things that I do from a blindness perspective. We're going to have Dave Wilkinson take over the presentation. So Dave Wilkinson is actually in a cab outside of an airport right now. Um, so a true testament of the greatness of technology right now that he's able to join us from his taxi. But I'm going to go ahead and let him take on the remainder of the webinar so that we can keep things moving. So Dave, it's all yours. We're talking about uh, tips for low vision. All right. Now, in fairness, a lot of the low vision tips that I'll be talking about are not something that I specifically use because um, I use a lot of the blindness stuff and don't have enough vision for our low vision stuff. So I'm speaking uh, sort of uh, for James or having James speak through me, I guess. Uh, but there are a number of things that you can do for low vision to help out. You can bring your own large print materials with you. And of course, you can use, uh, if you don't have your large print materials with you, you can use handheld magnifiers such as the candy uh, so that you can view uh, the materials or you can view things uh, close up or at a distance. For example, you can look at like uh, arrival and departure screens. You maybe would hear a jet in the background, which just strikes me as kind of humorous. Uh, overhead menus, what gate you're at, that type of stuff. You can use the freeze feature on the candy, uh, which will let you capture your gate information, and then you can look at it as you're running through the terminal. Your eBot Advanced is going to let you use the OCR feature for 
reading brochures before you leave so you know where you're going and you've got all the information about the, your, your travel destination. Uh, the eBot Pro is going to let you even save that text for later on so that you can pull it up on your, your tablet or your computer. Uh, you can look at it on the plane and review all, all the exciting information about where it, wherever it is that you're headed to. And if you want, you could even get the eBot out on the plane. Uh, good luck with the tray table, but it would kind of fit. And uh, you could do some reading on the plane. Then you could really freak out the passengers by using the uh, the distance viewing to look around the cabin. Although it'd probably be better equipped to looking around like off of the edge of a cruise ship to be able to see out into the ocean and see what's around you. So that would probably be a more useful uh, distance view for the eBot. Now we get into something that's near and dear to my heart, which is GPS features. I've been using GPS going all the way back to the late 90s when GPS was on laptops and when we were had cables and wires strapped up to us and number pads and everything else. And now you've got GPS on your phone, uh, you've got GPS on your tablet, you've got GPS on just about anything. And the Braille Sense has had GPS built into it for a number of years now. Uh, we have Google Maps, and we have also a built-in GPS receiver and compass. And the compass is important because GPS relies upon movement. And so if it tells you to go west, it doesn't know if you're actually going west or not until you start to move in whatever direction you move. And then it corrects itself, and then you have to double back. So the compass eliminates that. And if you need to head west, you look at the compass and you just head west. Now, one thing about using Google Maps is that you do have to have, at least on the Braille Sense line of products, you do have to have access to a Wi-Fi hotspot. So that can either be through your phone or through an internet cafe, uh, but you are using a Wi-Fi hotspot to actually get access to the maps. But hey, it's free. So hard to argue with a free GPS system. If you do want to go sort of all out, and be able to explore an area before you get there. Uh, the Sendero folks have referred to as the Cadillac of GPS products, which is, in my opinion, true. Uh, SenseNav on the BrailleSense products or any of the Sendero Group's uh, other iterations of the GPS, and they have a number of different platforms that they use, is an outstanding GPS program. You can browse an area ahead of time. I've already looked at my hotel the area in Kansas City this evening so that I know what restaurants are around. I've got a couple of routes planned out so that I can try to figure out uh, how to get from place to place. Uh, I've got my destination set in my hotel so that when I hop in a cab in Kansas City, I'll know where I'm going. And all of that becomes feasible with, with, with the Sendero GPS product. I also do use a number of GPS products on my phone. Some of my favorites, um, I like Blind Square. I was using Blind Square last summer uh, on the beach to be able to find my place back to where my towel was after going down the beach to take a walk. I like Blind Square because it has maps for the visual people so I can hand my phone to a visual person and say, here, this is where we want to go, like in a cab. And I just find it to be an extremely accessible GPS program. I've also used Navigon in the past uh, and TomTom. And a, a really good way of keeping up with a lot of your GPS programs, and for that matter, apps in general for your iPhone, um, is to download the VIP app from the Braille Institute. And you can also look at the AppleViz folks at www.appleviz.org, and they've got all kinds of information on updated apps, various access uh, accessibility features, uh, you know, if buttons do or don't work on your phone, etc. Also keep in mind that when you're using GPS with your phone, you can use the Braille Sense U2 or the Braille Edge as Braille displays, which means you can mute the speech on your GPS so folks around you don't have to hear that you're wanting to turn left or right or that you're on First Avenue or anything else. The new Blaze EZ that folks have heard a lot about can be used to uh, listen to brochures and printed information before you ever leave home. And again, it's going to let you save that so that you can re retrieve it and listen to it later on. And then once you're traveling, you can then use your Blaze EZ for entertainment uh, during flight. You can use it for your internet radio when you're in the airport. You can use the FM radio while you're in the airport. So you've got something that's going to be, that's going to give you information about the locations that you're going, and then it's going to double as your entertainment later on. Uh, the the uh, optical character recognition will let you look at menus in a restaurant. I used to look at all the little pieces of paper that they put in my uh, hotel 
just all the various random advertising stuff that visual people take for granted. Uh, I use it a lot of time to look at my hotel bill to make sure that I've been charged what I think I've been charged. And then I have the folks at the hotel email me the receipt anyway. I can record voice memos to remember things like hotel room and gate information. I can use the, the recorder to remind myself to do things later on. And again, I've got the, the, the entertainment value so that I can go back and I can actually listen to MP3s or something on the plane or movies or whatever I want. I've got a uh, long-lasting battery. It, it, it's going to be there when you need it. Another good sort of just random tip for traveling is you've got all kinds of batteries that you can get where you can hook, whether it's the Blaze or the Braille Sense or anything else, up to batteries uh, that you can charge by USB and then plug in through USB. Uh, there are all kinds of uh, long-life battery out there that you can use if, if, if you look around. And some other travel ideas that are just out there, you can activate things like your Wi-Fi hotspot for a month. So if you're going to be gone somewhere, you can temporarily activate your hotspot so that you'll have access to Google Maps on your HIMSS product while you're traveling the country uh, through the Wi-Fi on your phone. And then when you get back home, you'll be able to turn it off. So you only have to pay for the feature you know, while you actually want it. Uh, some other basic tips with the advent of things like Square, a lot of times you can get taxi drivers or other merchants to email you receipts, and I love this because one, it makes my record keeping that much easier for just when I'm when I'm getting uh, reimbursed, and second of all, they're just emails, and I can see the total that I was charged, and I've got all the details right there in front of me. You can use things like FaceTime, so that if you're lost, and I've done this, I've FaceTimed someone who was familiar with the area and asked them just where the heck I was which I just think is kind of entertaining, but it, it's true. Uh, and then you have apps like Tap Tap, tap C that will help you identify objects uh, and things that are around you that's using the camera on your phone. Sort of the final thought from my standpoint would be to have fun. Uh, travel can be stressful and chaotic if you're not careful. So stay relaxed and use that Blaze Easy to listen to lots of good music. You know, pump up the tunes and let the world float by and just relax. Don't let the travel get to you. Um, I actually have to run or I'm going to miss my flight. So I'm going to actually sign off at this point so that I can go go back to work. I can take over the Q&A, uh, but we are interested in hearing your thoughts on some of these ideas and finding out if you have any questions for us. Uh, Neil McKenzie said, any new updates for the YouTube coming soon? My answer is, I think we always have updates coming for the YouTube, but it is always top secret as to when they will be released. If you're on our email list, you will be the first to be notified when an update is released for the YouTube. We always send a big email to just about every contact in the database to let them know when those are ready. Todd wants to know, what is the best headset to use with iPhone? I think that's one of those things that varies by user. I always like to recommend a headset with some noise cancellation, especially if you're using a microphone, if you're using it to talk on the phone with a headset. Um, but I think it's personal preference. Some people like the big headset that goes all the way around the ears, like the Dr. Dre type. Um, and other people really would just want to have something smaller that fits inside the ear and can be coiled up and thrown in a pocket. So Neil commented after Todd asked the question. Neil said, some of our students like the bone conducting headphones. And that brings up actually another good point. If you're visually mm -hmm. impaired and you're using that headset for GPS or navigation, um, you probably want to have a headphone that also allows you to hear what's going on around you. You want to be able, if you're walking, to hear if there's a car coming, if there's a person coming. So the bone conducting headphones are really good because they will not obstruct the ear canal and will allow you to hear ambient noise as well. Um, another question from Helen, and this is a great question. When traveling, how can a visually impaired person identify the cab to the hotel they're going to? That is my biggest fear of traveling, getting to my hotel. And that might be one of those opportunities where you just want to find out. Normally, all of the cabs and the vans that are going to the hotels are in one specific area. And 90% of the time, there is an airport employee there that is helping people find the right cab and the right van. And I would recommend not being embarrassed to ask because I am fully sighted and I always have to ask. It seems like if when I get to a new city, I'm tired, I've been on a plane, 
there are a lot of cabs sitting out there and it's just easier to ask someone than try to figure it out on my own. So find an airport employee. If they see you with a cane or they see that you're visually impaired, they'll usually approach you and ask you where you're going. Tom wants to know the bone headset. Where do you get it? So Neil, I think your students are using bone conducting headphones. Do you have a recommendation on a brand or a source? Neil said Aftershock Blues 2. And I don't know if you guys are like me, but I am a shameless Amazon shopper and usually can find almost anything on there that I need. And Neil said the same thing. He said they're on Amazon. James McCarthy, our president, had just sent me a message and he said he likes to use Amazon because he can read the reviews. So that's another great tip. Um, and you can find these headsets in a lot of places, but Amazon will have you know hundreds of reviews on some of these products, and that's really handy. While we're waiting, if you want to learn about our products, you can visit our website. Uh, and we also have a YouTube channel. You can It's linked on the homepage of our website, so it's easy to find. We have a brand new set of videos about the Blaze EZ that are on the YouTube channel, and we're hopefully going to be adding a lot more information and new videos to that in 2015. Our next webinar coming up in January, a very hot requested item. People are always asking us for Braille Sense tips and tricks. And so we are going to have a webinar dedicated solely to the Braille Sense and our in-house AT gurus, probably Michael, Andy, and Dave, some combination of those three will present and they'll share their tips for using Google Maps, our new Excel viewer, some of the social media applications that are specific to our devices, and also the YouTube and the new feature uh, that will allow you to record right into a DAISY format.